apply pairs of lines and angles. Uh, first thing we need to understand is uh, what are skew lines? Do I know what a skew line is? Yeah, if they're not parallel, we typically understand that they have to intersect. But a skewed line is a line that doesn't intersect and isn't parallel. Okay? It's not in the same plane. So a line on this uh, board here and a line on the board back in the back, they're on two different planes and they don't necessarily have to be parallel uh, and they will never intersect. Okay? So uh, they do not intersect. And are not coplanar. Co ah, this brings me to postulate thirteen. Parallel postulate. Now, um, you need to know when you're giving me the reasons on your proofs, whether or not it's postulate or whether or not it's a theorem. So some of you didn't know on the test exactly how to say that. You should know them. You should know what they are. You only had a couple theorems really that you needed to know and then the rest were postulates. So make sure you have that stuff memorized, all right? All right, parallel postulate. If there is a line and a point, if there is line and a point. Not on the line. You have a line and you have another point, and that point is not on that original line. <coughs> okay, so you have a line and a point that's not on that line. Got it? If there's a line and a point that's not on the line, there's exactly one line There's exactly one line through the point parallel to the given line. Exactly one line through the point. Through the point. Perpendicular.
<clears throat> so if you have your three by five cards, you can write them on those that you're memorizing. So if there's a line and a point not on the line, there exists exactly one line through the point that's perpendicular to the line. So here's a line, here's a point. There exists exactly one line that goes through that point and is perpendicular to the line. Exactly one. the dotted line just to say it's there, there exists one, yes? It's all because of like, things like posture 6 or something like that, there has to be two points to make a line. Well, there's a point in that Well, I'm there. talking about on the parallel. On this one? Yeah. Well, it's saying there is a line which has infinitely many points. I mean, I could stretch it out further. Um, if there's a line and a point not on the line, this one point, then there must be a line with infinitely many points that is parallel to that line. Or with at least two points. I'm not making it up that there, well, there can't be a line because there's only one point. It's saying there is a line that goes through that has at least two points on it. Then how can postulate six be true? You're thinking way too hard about that. You gotta have two points to make a line, right? Yeah. It's saying there is a line. But it's saying there's But it's only picked there. one point that's on that line. So they said, out of this line that's that's here that's parallel to that one, if this point is not on that line, there exists a line that goes through it. So the line's there, they're saying that. And they're picking one point that's on that line. There's more than just that point on it, mate. There's just only one being shown. Yes. Don't think too hard about it. Transversal. <laughs> uh, a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. A line that intersects two or more. Coplanar lines at different points. Okay, so here's the crux of what we're doing. Typically, these are going to be parallel lines, but I'm going to draw them not parallel to start with. Intersects two or more coplanar lines. So these lines are coplanar, I'm not saying they're parallel. So the line's going to intersect both of them at two different points. Call that line L. So line L is a transversal. Okay, one, two, three, four. Label all these um, angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we need to understand positions. So we'll use this to understand certain positions. All right, so corresponding. Corresponding angles. So looking at the picture here, corresponding angles. What we really need to understand is the same position. That's what corresponding means. So if I were to pick up the top half of this at the intersection and put it on top of the bottom half, what angles would match up? Now, they're not exactly the same, but they're corresponding. They're in the same positions. So what is corresponding to angle 1? Uh, angle 5. Yeah, angle 1 and angle 5. Keep going. Angle 2 and angle 6. That's right. corresponding angles are. Okay, now let's do alternate 
interior angles. Interior means on the inside of the two lines. That's what interior means, inside the two lines. Alternate means opposite side of the transversal. So alternate interior, so interior angles here are 3, 4, 5, and 6. So what would be alternate interior angles? Alternating around the transversal, Blake? Angle 3 and angle 6. Angle 3 and angle 6. Angle 4 and angle 5. Angle 4 and angle 5. We good? You can stay focused on this if you want. And go back up. Okay. okay, now the next one is alternate exterior angles. So what this is saying, exterior angles are angles that are on the outside of the two lines. And then alternating would be on opposite sides of the transversal. So what would be alternate exterior angles? Angles. Alternate exterior angles. Is that one and eight? One and eight. And? Two and seven. Two and seven. Good. Now let's see if you can figure this one out. Consecutive interior angles. Not consecutive as far as uh, uh, the number line is concerned. Don't do that. Angle three. Yeah, same side. Consecutive would be on the same side. Three and five, four and six. I right, get that. Thank you. Any questions on those? And typically, this is going to; these two lines are going to be parallel. But the definitions of those things still apply, whether they're parallel or not. What we get into is when they're parallel, certain ones are exactly the same, and certain ones are um, supplementary. Okay. All right. Sure.